Newsadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Uh, this is the day of the Jake Paul Tommy Fury fight. It's ended. Tommy Fury has won the fight. This is not the fight I expected. My pre fight prediction was for Jake Paul to win the fight, not Tommy Fury. Let's talk about what I saw. Let's talk about what surprised me. Right again, Tommy Fury legitimately won the fight. I can tell you his beginning was strong at the end of five rounds. I only had Jake Paul winning the third round. I thought Tommy Fury had much better legs than Jake Paul. Jake Paul looked very flat-footed in this fight, right? I see Diddler uh, called for a Fury KO. You didn't get that. Your guy legitimately got knocked down in that last round, right? Straight left hand, but he did win the fight. Let's talk about the reasons here. Much better movement from Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury came in, right, with a game plan. He wasn't going to continually crash the pocket. He's actually moving laterally, and he is forcing Jake Paul to engage him. He also has much better sequencing than Jake Paul. So the first round is close until the last 10 seconds, right? They hit the uh, wood for the last 10 seconds, and then Tommy Fury, who has the vastly better legs, effortlessly gets in the pocket and throws a combination, right? Fury wins this fight, in my opinion on superior athleticism, superior movement, combination punching not designed to knock out Jake Paul, right? He's moving away from Jake Paul's straight right hand. Jake Paul just couldn't cut off the ring, couldn't step forward and engage this more athletic opponent. Let me say this too. The referee early in the fight puts a kibosh on the wrestling the two guys were doing. Right now, that was unfortunate for Jake Paul because understand, Jake Paul was having a hard time finding Tommy Fury. So when he found Tommy Fury, the wrestling would have actually helped Jake Paul, the slower fighter. Let me also say too, I thought the fight was over refed. We've all here seen a lot of boxing matches. What was the deal when they took a point away from Jake Paul, right? That first point taken away from Jake Paul in an eight round fight that he's losing at the time the points taken away pretty much sealed his fate, didn't it? Let me also say too, that Tommy Fury's stamina was spectacular. I thought he gets knocked down in the eighth round, but let's be real here. Tommy Fury otherwise is winning the eighth round. In other words, Jake Paul needed a comeback late in the fight. And I just didn't see where he was having the comeback before he knocks down Tommy Fury. Right? So I was expecting Jake Paul to win this fight. Even I'm wondering what fight the judge who had Jake Paul ahead saw, right? I thought Tommy Fury wins this fight by at least a couple of rounds. Let me also say, too, that Jake Paul seemed befuddled by Tommy Fury's head movement and upper body movement, right? Tommy is standing there, but he's always moving, and he has the energy to always move. He has an extra beat in his step that Jake Paul doesn't have, right? What Jake Paul needs to do is to find a way to close the distance. In other words, he has to take chances with his foot speed. He needs to find a way to close the distance. And when a guy is moving continuously up top, Jake Paul should have aimed a jab. Jake Paul has a decent jab for Tommy Fury's chest. Right, Jake Paul should have, like Fury was doing, at times just come in with a series of punches and should have tried to take away Tommy Fury's body. 
Now, let me say, Fury is a master clincher. So in the second half of this fight, Jake Paul does try to get aggressive. He does try to come in and be a little bit more roughhouse. But he's too slow in doing it. He never matches Tommy Fury in terms of hand speed. Never. Right then when he comes inside, Fury is skillful at tying him up. So Jake Paul is going to have to give an opponent less to tie up than he is right now. In other words, it's very hard to come in and tie up Canelo, for example. Right? Canelo's in a shell. Canelo makes sure that as you're trying to tie him up, he's throwing punches, right? That's what the greats do. Jake Paul is going to have to work on that part of his game. Let me say, too, it was interesting. At the beginning of the fight, Jaleon Love, who is one of the guys in Jake Paul's corner, is telling Jake Paul, hey, look, don't take a step back, right? Be aggressive. But understand, Jake Paul... Even with a front foot mindset, isn't front foot enough? In other words, as Tommy Fury is moving, Jake Paul freezes, right? This isn't a fight where a Mike Tyson is coming after a Frank Bruno, right? And you understand, look, you know, Tyson's going to be on his front foot, right? Marvis Fraser, Tyson's on his front foot trying to track down a guy. Right, George Foreman against Joe Fraser. Right, Foreman is coming inside. He's going to be a nuisance. Here you have Jake Paul befuddled by Tommy Fury's movement. I see Mike is saying, told you to wire, easy money Fury decision. I'll concede it. Right, Fury clearly won this fight by at least a couple rounds. I see Jay Foreman says, master clincher. That's a big part of the fight, folks, because Jake Paul looks like he's the puncher. But you'll notice when Jake Paul comes in, he doesn't even get an opportunity to throw a lot of leather because Tommy Fury, in addition to being much faster in terms of footwork and having more stamina, is able to tie him up continually. So let me tip my hat to Tommy Fury. Uh, I liked his post-fight comments where he said, hey, look, whoever's in my family, I am Tommy Fury. Right. I'm, I'm going to stand on my merits, basically. My words, not his. Right. Let me congratulate Tyson Fury, because I thought the champ uh, was full of you know what. Right. When he uh, said that uh, Tommy was going to win this fight. Let me also take a shot at the champ here. Right. What's going on with not finalizing the deal against Usyk? What's the deal with that? To me, that's a chump move. Uh, All I can say is it's not like these guys aren't getting paid enough money. Usyk, undisputed at Cruiser, has already beaten Anthony Joshua twice, one of them in the UK. Give the man a 50-50 split. If you want an advantage, have the fight in your backyard in the United Kingdom. Right? But, But don't pull this punk move where two guys who clearly should fight each other In boxing's glamour division, look, I have a lot of respect for the other divisions, right? I'd love to see Bevo fight Paterbiev at 175. I'd love to see Spence fight Crawford at 147. But let's get real here. 175 and 147 aren't the heavyweight division, right? The same way I blame Anthony Joshua for not having the fight against an unbeaten, at the time, Deontay Wilder, who had a share of the title and who was willing to cross the Atlantic to fight him in the UK, the same way I blame Anthony Joshua for not following through on that fight. I'm blaming Tyson Fury here, right? Usyk wants a 50-50 split. Give the brother a 50-50 split, Right. If you want an advantage and it's a substantial one, say, no, no, I want the fight in the UK. You'll get 50 percent, but it has to be in front of my people. Right. So while Tyson Fury is certainly a great fighter. Right. I'm just going to say it's a chump move. And while Tyson Fury's family obviously has skills in the ring. Right. Not just Tommy Fury, but Yui Fury. 
right? I'm going to say it's a jump move keeping boxing fans waiting, right? It's so bad that guys who want a shot on Tyson Fury, like Joe Joyce, have accepted other fights. Isn't he fighting Zhang Zhili? Right, Tyson, let me also say, too, you've made enough money for Frank Warren and Bob Arum. I understand everyone around you wants to get paid. Lord knows you've been paid handsomely for fights, right? That Dillian White fight was a financial blockbuster. You need to start telling guys, look, I don't want to be Anthony Joshua. I don't want people wondering whether I could beat Usyk. Right, Tyson Fury, and I'm taking shots on him here because I'm guessing a lot of his fans, a lot of his family's fans are watching this video. Tyson Fury needs to do the right thing here. and needs to realize that Usyk isn't, you know, the latest opponent. No, Usyk's a guy who beat Peterbiev in the amateurs, right? Beat guys like Breedis and Gassiev at Cruiser undisputed at cruiser has beaten anthony joshua who really let's get real for a moment here is the other british fighter who we feel might have a claim to this era right joshua several defenses as heavyweight champion so given Usyk's stature make the fight happen it's not like Usyk's asking for 51 percent Right, He has earned some belts in the heavyweight division. If you're going to be undisputed, give the man 50%. Let's stop the games. Right? I worry for Anthony Joshua, quite frankly. Because years from now, I'm guessing there's going to be someone saying, what? Joshua fought at the same time as Fury and Wilder and didn't fight either of them? And those two guys fought each other three times? Anyway, that's all I have to say on this. Let me also add one more comment here, right? Teofimo Lopez, Josh Taylor, right? You know what? There was a time when these guys looked like they were about to take over boxing. There was a time when these guys looked like they were sharp, looked like they were at their best. Folks, I don't have a clue who wins that fight because both guys have decayed considerably right i mean is there anyone watching this video anyone watching this video who thinks that josh taylor the guy who got beaten up in, in my opinion by jack catterall got a gift decision in that fight is there anyone here who thinks he beats reaches pogre again i don't right so just understand, when you catch fighters, matter. And Teofimo Lopez, who I thought was struggling in his fight against Sander Martin, I think Teofimo Lopez and Josh Taylor are well off their primes. Right? In my opinion, in boxing, it takes a while to be sharp. Right? Josh Taylor, too front foot heavy. Let's face it. Teofimo Lopez these days is too much of a pot shotter. Sander knew as he threw jabs and backed away from the pocket that Teofimo couldn't engage with him. Right? I see U754 says Regis is a dangerous puncher. Exactly. Right? With Jack Catterall, you can be a little sloppy and still be upright. Right? If you're that sloppy against Regis, you're out. Right? Let me read a couple more of these. The thing keeps flashing at me here. Um, okay, it says, Smoke Ray barely made it past Zepeda. Let me just say, Zepeda, underrated fighter. I did think Regis was winning that fight, but Zepeda, underrated fighter, the water is deep at 140, and it's about to get deeper, right? Because I, I look at um, the guys at 135, and I just get the feeling that they're going to have to gain weight. Devin Haney, in my opinion, is going to show up at 140 sooner or later, right? I don't see any way that a Teofimo Lopez can beat a Devin Haney at this point, given how Lopez's game 
has dropped off, right? I see here Tank versus Regis is the fight. Let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. I think Tank takes out King Rye, Ryan Garcia, right? But just understand, there's a split in the community. Robert Garcia, the superstar trainer, has given interviews where he just feels that King Rai just has too much hand speed, right? Everyone understands that King Rai fights a little bit upright, has his chin exposed, um, isn't defensively blessed, uh, is young compared to someone like Gervonta Davis in terms of the boxing mindset, right? But the question is, given Gervonta's problems outside the ring, quite frankly, right? Let's face it, the brother has serious problems. Uh, this is a Valero-type situation almost, right? The question really is, uh, is the hand speed going to be such that Gervonta Davis won't know what to do? I think Davis wins the fight, right? I would take Regis over Gervonta Davis because I'm assuming that fight takes place at 140, right? They're throwing a catch weight at us for this King Rye fight, right? Which is a little bit weak. By the way, if you're on the Ryan Garcia part of that fight, you need to be concerned about the fact that Garcia is going to have to lose a few pounds. And of course, Garcia already is a taller man, right? I'm guessing you go to Regis and you say, hey, you need to lose some pounds off 140. Regis is going to say, for what? Who the hell are you? <laughs> I, I crossed the Atlantic to fight Josh Taylor in his backyard. I'm the champ at 140. If you want a taste of my title, you have to come to my division. Right? So I would take Regis right now over Gervonta Davis. Right? Quite frankly, I don't see the fighter at 140 who can beat Regis right now. Maybe Josh Taylor's going to turn back the clock. I question that. Let me hit up a few more of these. Uh, Haney is seriously overrated by some folks. I'll say this, even I question Haney's power. You and I know that Haney was bluffing after he got uh, caught by, um, ooh, I forget the guy's name. Um, but after he got caught by a guy and Haney staggered back to his corner, you understood that Haney had to stay away, right? I would question Haney's chin. I would say George Cambosis was perfect for him. Right. Let me see. Tommy Fury is ready for Canelo. Come on. <laughs> well, keep in mind, there's a weight gap. Let me say this. Canelo should have fought Makabu. Right. Because Canelo's game is made for fighting southpaws. And Makabu just got destroyed by uh, Badu Jack, who doesn't have that much experience at cruiserweight. Right. Um, I think Tommy Fury gets destroyed by Canelo. I think uh, Canelo is a guy who would know how to cut off the ring on him, right? Tommy Fury certainly beat Jake Paul, but didn't show a lot of power. Hey, thank you, John Doe. Much appreciated. Jake Paul didn't show a lot of power in this fight. You're right. It's Jorge Linares who buzzed Devin Haney, and Devin Haney went back to his corner looking a little bit shaken. Right. Um, absolutely uh, correct there. Um, you know, the Badu Jack fight, I was wrong on that fight, although the hedge held. Right. Didn't deserve the hedge of a knockout. Right. Badu Jack could have coasted to the decision there. But at least I get to live for another day there. Right. But Badu Jack, I'll be fading him. I'll be blunt. Uh, because Badu Jack looked uninspired in a few fights going into this one. I will say this, though. I believe, and double-check me on this, this is his third weight class, third, that he's been champion. Given the quality of his opposition, I would argue that Badu Jack is now a Hall of Famer. Let me say this, too. They love him, love him in Dubai. Right, love him. So Badu Jack has something that's very important in boxing, right? He can generate box office. And you give him the belt, right? He's now the cruiserweight champion. You give him the belt, and fighters are gonna have to come to him to fight for the title. 
right? Let me see what else is here. Yeah, Canelo would kill Tommy Fury. Yeah, you might need to have a coroner ringside, not just the ring doctor for that one, right? Um, a lot of the stuff Tommy's doing, you know, the head movement was excellent, right? The upper body movement. Uh, Canelo is a wicked body puncher, right? Absolutely wicked. Um, I don't think that would bother Canelo. Also, uh, Canelo's left hook is one of the best punches in boxing. One of the problems Jake Paul had in this fight is he didn't know how to slow down Tommy Fury, right? Canelo's left hook is the kind of thing that would force Tommy Fury to go, you know, to his left, away from Canelo's left hook. And, of course, Canelo is devastating with that straight right hand. Canelo's hard to hit. Right, Tommy Fury moves well, but doesn't move as well as Caleb Plant, a guy who Canelo was able to catch up with. You know, yeah, I see here the Keggy points out that Badu Jack's list of opponents from 2005 to 2019 is exceptional. Let me say too that there are certain fighters I rate more highly than the public. I thought James DeGale was a tremendous fighter. Right, he could switch from southpaw to righty to southpaw to righty several times in a round, and Badu Jack fought him as well as others. Right, uh, Jean Pascal, um, Badu Jack is going to be remembered in history uh, much more favorably than he is right now. Right, it says here, um, Fury is low risk, <laughs> low reward for Canelo. Yeah, I don't think Tommy Fury wants to fight Canelo right now. Right. And Tommy Fury is a guy, quite frankly, with a record that's really padded, folks. If you um, look through his record, even the guy with the best record that he fought was coming off a loss. Right. So let's not get too carried away. I know the WBC, you know, was talking about ranking the winner of this fight. Uh, if you're in Tommy Fury's family and it's a boxing family. Right. If they say, hey, you want to fight Canelo, if Tommy's serious about having a career in boxing, he has to turn that fight down. It's too soon. Right. Let me read a couple more of these. Uh, right. Uh, Jack knocked out James DeGale's teeth. Understand the Gale had fake teeth. Um, just food for thought uh, here. It says here, Tommy went eight with Jake Paul. He would go two with Canelo. You know, Canelo against Rocky Fielding. I thought Fielding was overmatched. Canelo is a slow burn type guy, isn't he? Canelo doesn't run across the ring and start throwing a lot of big punches. Canelo takes his time, right? So if that over under was down around three rounds, I myself might take the over in a Tommy Fury Canelo fight. Fury is an athlete, right? He had stamina. He moved extremely well. Uh, even when the fighters were just looking at each other, I noticed Tommy Fury seemed to be moving, and he had reflexes, right? The, he was ready on demand to cover a lot of ground in the last 10 seconds of that first round against Jake Paul. Just food for thought. By the way, I still think Paul has a bright future, but if I were a matchmaker for Paul, and I understand there was a rematch clause here, I would not do the rematch against Tommy Fury. Fury is not going to lose that foot speed and athleticism. If I'm Jake Paul, right, the Fury fight will always be there, right? If I'm Jake Paul, I restore my confidence. I fight a guy who's a little bit more slow moving, a guy who might be defensively gifted, Right? I don't consider Tommy Fury to be defensively gifted. In other words, he was using his legs for defense a lot here. It wasn't like the pocket collapsed and you still had a hard time finding him. Right? He's not Ugas or some fighter like that. Um, if I'm Jake Paul, I try to find a guy with slower foot speed where a pocket's going to form. And then I try to do things, right? figure out the movement and work on being able to hit moving targets before I fight Tommy Fury again. Understand, were Paul to fight Tommy Fury again and lose again, then people will start looking at 
Jake Paul as more of a novelty act than a professional fighter. He needs to get back to winning. I think these rematch clauses are overrated. If I were Chris Eubank, right, and I thought Eubank was the better fighter in that fighter, I wouldn't fight Liam Smith right now, right? Um, let me see a few more of these. <laughs> the way Macabre looked, Paul might beat him. Um, you know, I'll say this too. Makabu, 35 years old, has made a lot of money. Um, I think Makabu, Southpaw, unlike Jake Paul, I think Makabu would uh, give uh, Tommy some problems, but we will see. All right, well, that's it. I'm going to fade here. I see the Keggy saying that uh, Jake Paul should fight Nate Diaz next. I think that'd be a compelling fight. Right. I mean, understand Nate Diaz has a lot of fans. And the one thing you know about Nate Diaz is that he is a warrior. Right. The fact that Jake Paul lost a fight here shows that he's mortal. And that mortality might attract a lot of fans to that Nate Diaz fight. Right. If I'm Jake Paul, I think about Nate Diaz. I think about, you know, other opponents. Then I work my way back to Tommy Fury, right? What Jake Paul might want to do, too, is what fighters used to do in the old days. Show up at Tommy Fury fights, right? Be in the front row. Pay for the ticket, <laughs> right? Show up just to remind people that, you know, you're there, right? Tommy can call you out and say, when are we going to fight again? And say, hey, hey, we will. I'm working on a few things. I'll be ready for you next time. Fight fans will respect that. Right? I do believe Jake Paul is a real fighter. There were a couple of times in this fight where he landed some right hands that you thought were going to do damage on Tommy. Tommy does have a chin on him. Right? I see Nate Diaz is about 40. Right? Folks, how old is Badu Jack? Is it Badu Jack 39? Badu Jack just won <laughs> the Cruiserweight title. <laughs> Right. How old is Jack Geely for crying out loud? How old is Joe Joyce? Right. In the heavier weight classes, I'm just telling you, guys age more slowly. Anyway, that's all I got to say uh, today. I can tell I need to do more of uh, these live videos. Let me just thank the people who came out for it. Uh, I'll have this video up. Let me concede I was wrong on this fight. This is not the fight I expected. I thought Jake Paul was going to be able to cut off the ring. I thought we were going to see some heavy right hands. I thought Jake Paul was going to win this fight by stoppage. I was wrong on my scorecard. Tommy Fury clearly won the fight. As I said, by the end of the fifth round, I thought Tommy Fury was up four rounds to one. Let me also say, too, that Tommy Fury knew how to fight lower than Jake Paul. Jake Paul tries to fight low at times. Right. Tommy Fury seemed to be able to be low and to still move. Right. It wasn't like they were both leaned down looking at each other. Tommy actually showed you that he could, you know, move during lulls in the action. He uh, had more athleticism than Jake Paul for this fight. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I hope you leave a lot of comments in this video and other videos as well. Until next time, peace. I do so few of these, I don't even know how to turn this thing off.